వెల్కమ్ టు అక్షరశాల ఇన్ దిస్ సెషన్ ఐఎమ్ గోయింగ్ టు ఇంట్రడ్యూస్ ఎ బై స్టేబుల్ మల్టీ వైబ్రేటర్ అండ్ వి విల్ సి డిఫరెంట్ టైప్స్ ఆఫ్ బై స్టేబుల్ మల్టీ వైబ్రేటర్ అండ్ దేర్ అప్లికేషన్స్ అండ్ ఆల్సో లెట్ అస్ డిస్కస్ about the working of fixed bias and self bias by stable multi vibrators by stable multi vibrator is a multi vibrator which can exist indefinitely in either of its two stable states in last video already i told by stable multi vibrator has got two stable states so it can exist indefinitely in either of its two stable states and which can be induced to make an abrupt transition from one state to the other by means of external excitation suppose if you want to induce any change in its state it requires external triggering upon the application of external triggering it makes an abrupt transition from one state to the other only on the application of external triggering in a bi stable multi vibrator both the coupling elements are resistors why because it has got two stable states so in the stable states requires only dc coupling so in the stable states if you want to couple the output of one uh, stage amplifier to the input of other stage amplifier resistive coupling is required the bi stable multi vibrator is also called that means bi stable multi vibrator is also known by variety of other names it is also called as just a multi output of bi stable multi vibrator is used to trigger other circuits that's why it is also named as trigger circuit it is uh, used to store one bit information so it is also called as flip flap it has got two stable states so hence it is also named as binary or scale of two title circuit it is designed by eclas and jordan that's why this circuit also named as eclas jordan circuit there are two types of bi stable multi vibrators collector coupled bi stable multi vibrator and second one is emitter coupled bi stable multi vibrator again uh, there are two types of collector coupled bi stable multi vibrators first one is fixed bias bi stable multi vibrator second one is self bias bi stable multi vibrator so let us see first one fixed bias bi stable multi vibrator so a fixed bias bi stable multi vibrator following figure this figure this figure is the circuit diagram of fixed bias bi stable multi vibrator here it is constructed by using transistors here if you see here this multi vibrator consists of two cross coupled inverters so note that output of output of first stage amplifier is directly coupled to the input of other amplifier and amplifier of second stage is directly coupled to the input of first stage in one of the stable states transistor q1 transistor q1 is on and transistor q2 will be in off state in other stable state q1 will be in off q1 will be off and q2 is on so if you see this circuit this circuit is symmetrical almost transistor one uh, a collector resistance here also one collector resistance one transistor at the base of each uh, transistor one uh, r2 r2 is connected to minus vbb and uh, short connection of uh, both the collector ka resistances are connected to vcc even though the circuit is symmetrical it is not possible for the circuit to remain in a stable state 
with both the transistors conducting. When both the transistors starts conducting, when they are operated either in active region or in saturation region, then both the transistors starts conducting. So when both the transistors conducting simultaneously and carrying equal currents, I1 and I2, both are connected to equal voltage, no VCC. So both will draw equal currents. The reason is that, the reason is that, if we assume both the transistors are biased equally, so both the transistors are biased equally, both are biased equally. Why? Because both uh, uh, bases are connected to same uh, voltage source. Here both the collectors are connected to another voltage source VCC. So if we assume both the transistors are biased equally and are carry carrying equal currents, I1, I2. And suppose there is a minute fluctuation in I1. So due to this fluctuation, let us assume that I1 increases by a small amount. If I1 increases by small amount, what happens? The drop across RC, drop across RC increases. Now if you want to calculate voltage at a collector point of transistor Q1, decreases. Why? Because voltage at a collector point of transistor Q1 is given by VCC minus I1 RC. If I1 increases, drop across RC increases, then potential at this point, voltage at C1 decreases. This decrease in collector potential of transistor Q1 is directly coupled to the base of transistor Q2. That means, uh, result in a decrease in the voltage at the base of transistor Q2. If voltage at this point decreases, this will, this will result in, why? Because this decrease in voltage is coupled to the coupled to the base of the transistor Q2. So if base voltage of transistor Q2 de decreases, then what happens? It conducts less. Transistor Q2 conducts less. If it conducts less, I2 decreases. I2 decreases. If I2 decreases, drop across RC decreases. I2 RC. I2 decreases means I2 RC also decreases. If I2 RC decreases, what happens to potential at the point C2? Increases. Why? Because potential at point C2 is given by apply KVL in the output loop. VCC minus I2 RC. I2 RC decreases, no? So then VCC minus I2 RC increases. If this drop decreases, potential at this point increases. This potential at this point increases. This increase in voltage again connected to the potential of base potential of transistor Q1. If base potential of transistor Q1 now increases. If base potential of transistor Q1 increases, it conducts heavily, it conducts more and more, it conducts still more and I1 is further increased. If I1 increased, again drop across RC increases. If I drop across RC increases, potential at this point further decreases. This, uh, this will result in decrease in the voltage at the base of transistor Q2. Then Q2 conducts less and I2 decreases. Drop across RC decreases, potential at this point, at point C2, point C2 increases. This increase again connected to the, this increase in the base potential of Q1 conducts still more and I1 further increase, increases and potential at this point, potential across RC further Increased potential at point C1 further decreases. This uh, continues. Continues. Uh, so that means so the current I1 keeps on increasing and the current I2 keeps on decreasing, right? So till Q1 goes into saturation and Q2 goes into cutoff. So this process continues until Q1 goes into saturation and Q2 goes into cutoff. This action takes place because of the regenerative fe feedback incorporated into the circuit and will occur only if the loop gain is greater than 1. This is the working of fixed bias by stable multivibrator. Very important. So applications of bus stable multivibrator. The bus stable multivibrator may be used to drive other circuits. So output of bus stable multivibrator is used to drive other circuits and hence at one or both the collectors, 
there are shunting loads a bus stable multi vibrator is the basic memory element it is used to store one bit information it is used to perform many digital operations such as counting and storing of binary data it also finds extensive applications in the generation and processing of pulse type waveforms now let us see second one this is second uh, bus stable multi vibrator in collector coupled bus stable multi vibrators so collectors are coupled to the base uh, base of another transistor that's why this uh, this type of classification are called uh, collector coupled bus stable multi vibrators in collector coupled bus stable multi vibrator so first one is fixed bias where so this is fixed bias diagram only so this is fixed bias diagram only. Uh, here biasing conditions are provided by one voltage source minus vbb and another voltage source vcc so fixed voltage sources are required for providing biasing conditions that's why this multi vibrator is called fixed bias bi stable multi vibrator so here it requires one uh, positive power supply and one negative power supply two power supplies are required for providing biasing conditions for the both the transistors so the need for the negative power supply so the need for the negative power supply may be eliminated by using a common emitter resistance the binary using common emitter resistance re to provide self bias is called self biased binary the drop across re provides biasing conditions for the transistor q1 and transistor q2 so this circuit itself generating biasing conditions that's why this particular configuration of bus stable multi vibrator is uh, called as self biased binary the voltage drop across re provides biasing conditions for transistor q1 and q2 for this reason it is uh, called as self biased binary and this is the circuit diagram of self biased binary circuit it is in principle the same as that employed for fixed bias binary operation wise both are same oh, what is the basic difference between these two are only minus here here minus vbb is used for providing biasing conditions instead of minus vbb one emitter resistance is connected both the emitters are coupled and one common emitter resistance is connected between common emitter points and ground the drop across re provides biasing conditions for transistor q1 and q2 that is the basic difference operation wise both are same only construction wise this is the small difference between a uh, fixed bias and self bias why it is done just to decrease the cost for any queries please contact aksharashala@gmail.com thank you